Find the best people you want to get close to. Find them. Get close to them. Do whatever it takes to learn everything you can from them. Because when you do, you're going to be a lot better off. I want to see other people win. We're so focused on ourselves in the beginning that we forget about other people. But to build an empire, you can't do it with one person. What's up, y'all? Today, I'm going to discuss how to diffuse arguments, heated conversations, and encounters that you have with people. Uh, this could be online. M mostly applicable, we can say, in person because there's going to be certain techniques that you're going to do in person. However, you can do this via email, text, and everything. You're just going to have to make slight adjustments, all right? Now, I want to premise this video real quick, okay? This is for people that you're in a debate with slash argument, right? And that you care about keeping things peaceful with them and pursuing it. This does not apply to people that you have no interest in discussing things with or trying to reach a mutual agreement with. If you don't care, move on, okay? Don't waste your time. So this wouldn't apply to you, okay? But for family, friends, people around you, trolls online, right? You can apply this if you wanna take the higher ground, take responsibility and communicate at a higher level. And more than anything, this is for your own peace of mind because heated arguments and debates leave a residue of energy on you. Energetically, it fucks with you and you don't know that. A lot of people don't know that and it literally will eat you alive from the inside. So by doing this, you keep your energy clean, which is cool because even if you can't come to a, 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 a peaceful ending, you'll be okay knowing, hey, I did the right things at the right time and for whatever reason, they just didn't want to agree or comply with some of these requests that I made. All right, so let's get into it. Number one is meet them where they're at. This is what I mean. If somebody comes in heated, I'm gonna say, hey man, what's up? Right? If I'm entering an argument, resolving it with two people, or, or someone is coming at me with extreme emotion, initially, I have to meet them where they're at. This is a mistake that people make. Why do you think when you call a customer service line and you're bitching them out and, they, and you're yelling like, man, what the fuck is going on? And they're like, I'm so sorry, sir. You're just like, you get even more mad, right? Because they're not meeting you where they're at. They're giving you a different level of energy. You feel like, hey, they don't understand me. They don't get me. And then you want to go even more. Same thing when someone is yelling and someone tries to come in all apologetic and talk like this. Hey, man, it's okay. They get even more aggressive. So you got to meet them where they're at initially, at least to shock them and stop them. You've seen this in videos as well where people are yelling. Then the third party who comes in to try to defuse the situation is like, hey, hey, hey. And then everyone kind of, they may still stay loud, but they'll stop for a second and they won't try to overcome that person. So you have to meet them where they're at. Now this part right here makes people um, extremely uncomfortable. Here, I left my, my magic wand here, right? This makes people extremely uncomfortable, so I'm gonna star this. This takes time to get good at. You're gonna have to work on it to be uh, at that high level of finesse with it, right? But you gotta meet people where they're at, man, if you don't, because this initial part, argument and all that, people are in their emotions and you have to understand that, right? They're just gonna respond and react. They're not at cause point. At that point, they're in their lower self, not their higher self. So they're not up here, they're down here, right? Listen and acknowledge. The number one reason you continue feeding an argument and a debate, especially in person, right? But this, again, applies online as well, is what do you see happen? People get louder. People start talking over each other, they cut each other off, and it becomes disrespectful to where now the communication can't even be had at all. So if you have to put your emotions to the side for a second, I know this is difficult because you feel, especially if you're in a crowded situation, that if you're letting the other person talk, they're winning. That's stupid, that's stupid. That's very low level, dumb, drama, high school bullshit, okay? You have to get over that. Listen, and then acknowledge and say, okay, but listen to them, do not cut them off, do not interrupt them. And then when they're done, speak up. So now I know people are gonna say, well, what if, what if it's that one person who yells and yells and yells? Eventually they're gonna stop, okay? But if you have to, you can jump in, but let them at least speak their sequence. Because wherever you're at in the argument, there's something that has to be said. And even if they're egging you on, hey, what do you got to say? Today? Say, okay, chill, are you done? I've heard you out, are you done? Let them acknowledge, then move forward. So at least now you can create this balance of going back and forth and it's not, I'm gonna fight over the top of you uh, to where it gets out of hand and then people wanna fight or just storm out. Say, fuck this, I'm done, right? This is how you start establishing control. 
Because from there, I can take control. But it first has to start with somebody slowing down, letting the other person talk. And again, remember, remember the asterisk here at the beginning of this video is, is if you care. If you don't care, leave. Forget it. Okay? But this is how you start slowly drawing them in and getting control, bringing the emotions down, and having more of a regular communication. All right? Find common ground. Find common ground. Even if you have to acknowledge something that they said earlier. If you're going back and forth with somebody, either you've agreed with something they've said, or you can throw in a statement and say, well, okay, I get it. I'm here. You're there. We're not agreeing. I'm sure we can both agree on this, right? Well, regarding this topic, we can both agree on this portion of it, correct? Or you know what? Based on what you're saying and what I've said, it sounds like we both agree on this. Is that right? See, figure out a way to establish common ground because you can do that. Again, if my intent is to be peaceful with this person and get to some place of, of common ground, I can do it. But a lot of times it's, I'm going to have to insert that, insert that potential for common ground. You know why? Because if you do it, even if you have to pull something in from left field, when you cause that agreement, again, you're bringing it down another notch of the intensity and the back and forth. Now you're going to see it's going to become more peacefully. And they may say, well, yeah, I do, but I still don't, blah, blah, blah. But see, now you're already working towards getting to um, a, a good position where you're standing next to each other now, having a discussion, versus standing face to face and wanting to throw blows. You know what I mean? And, and this step, I believe, after, especially after you do two, it becomes natural. Once you start listening and acknowledging them, they'll slow down a little bit and the heated, the heatedness, we can say, of the argument will come down. Then you can throw this in. Now, in many cases, if you really listen to what they said, at some point, there will be something that they said that you agree with, right? And a lot of times, when I'm going back and forth with somebody, if I decide to engage in this, I don't completely disagree with everything. Or within one of their points, it may be partially true. So I'll grab on that part that's partially true and say, well, what you said, that part, I agree with that. Because you said blah, 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 right? Cool. Well, we both agree on that. It's just this last part then, right? Yeah? Cool. See, now, now this is getting better. So number four is now that you've toned it down a little bit, you're asking questions to clarify, right? Because now I have at least a, a hint of common ground. Let's say you still haven't found it yet. You've tried that, you still haven't found it. However, overall, at this point, it's begun to calm down a little bit. So now I can at least ask them questions to get to their rationale. A lot of times what we do is we assume that people know what we know and think how we think, which is completely incorrect. So by you asking questions to clarify at this point, number one, they're going to be more likely to listen. But number two, I can get insight into what you're thinking and how you're thinking, which is the key. I need to find out why you think what you think. How did you come to that conclusion? You, you mentioned blah, blah, blah. How, how, how did you come to that conclusion? So what was said or what did you learn that made you believe blank? I want to understand. I want to understand. Right? And that's something you say. I want to understand or I, I, I want to get where you're coming from because right now I can't see it. Break it down for me. Maybe I'm missing something. Okay? Again, it sounds like you're asking for help or you're kissing ass to some people. You're not. I'm just trying to understand your position. Because again, this is somebody I care about who, or who I have an interest in to come to some sort of agreement or some standstill in this back and forth. So I'm going to have to ask questions to clarify. Right? Now, for those of you who aren't working on your, on your communication, this can be a little bit more difficult because you're not doing this on a regular basis, so you're so fucking caught up in your emotions, you can't stop for a second and ask questions. This is why I love getting in these back and forths sometimes with people who are all in their emotions and I'm just standing here like, okay, dude, where did you come to that conclusion? And they're like, how can you not? I'm just like, okay, okay, I'm listening. And they're just ridiculous. I like that. That's a fucking test for me. I really want to just stop and fucking punch them, but I won't. I'm cool, calm, and collected. I'm just like, okay, dude, go ahead. Get as mad as you want. It's not affecting me. And that's cool. Because a couple years ago, I couldn't do that. I would have been like, fuck this person, right? And lastly, I kind of just said it right now. You got to check your own emotions. How many times do you get up in your feelings when you're talking to people? For no reason. The littlest shit used to set me off. Somebody cutting me off in traffic. My fucking cat's making a noise, right? Like all kinds of shit. I, I would yell and be like, why the fuck am I yelling? How did that cat making one little noise get me to fucking scream at the top of my lungs. How does that happen? Right? How easily triggered am I? And most of the population today is so easily triggered, it's fucking ridiculous. And you know what that is? That's weakness. We all have it. And I had it way too much back in the day. Not so much now. 
It's very difficult for me to get triggered now, but I've been working on this shit for years. That shit is weakness. If you can't sit there and have a civil conversation with somebody when you disagree with them, when you want to, of course, right? Because some people are going to be violent or whatever, you walk away. But when you want to, if you want to and you can't, you have a weakness. You have a problem that you need to fix. And that's the problem with this fucking country right now in the world is motherfuckers can't talk to each other anymore. It's just, yeah, fuck you. Uh, stupid. Too much division, right? Okay, what does communication do? It brings people together because it opens up a line for you to connect with somebody, right? So with that said, we'll end it here. Hopefully this helped you, right? Maybe uh, I can do a live role play one time where somebody pretends to argue with me or I'll have one of those little hidden cameras walking around with me and I'll wear some controversial shit to get somebody to argue with me. And then you can watch me break down all of these points live, right? We'll see if that happens, okay? We've got to ask Jose here who's behind the camera. If he's down for it, then maybe we'll do it. Thank you guys for watching. Um, you know, I'll keep the announcement short. Modern success if you guys want to get on my coaching and get more mentorship from me. Link is in the description. If you guys are in the real estate world and you want to come work with me and my team, which is now nationwide and worldwide, go to partnerwithteambc.com. Watch the video if you like it. Uh, go ahead and schedule a call with us. And lastly, my two new channels, Brian Casella Show, Supreme Being Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to both of those as we're uploading regularly. That's it for this one. Leave a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Peace.